morning morning everybody welcome to trading capital's daily live stream of the market open today is currently april 15th welcome welcome to the stream all right so obviously uh, tensions escalated over the weekend in the middle east hopefully this mic is okay right now as we're just fixing some sound tensions escalated obviously that caused crypto to see some downward pressure once that uh, iran israel news came out and basically, we've seen crypto rebound kind of stabilize in its same little vicinity. Right now, the markets are gapping up across the board. But what's interesting is you actually have the 10-year, the 2-year, the 20, the 30. All yields are, are phenomenally strong today. 10-year up to 4.6%, up 1.81%. Gold, silver strong. VIX weak right now. Dollars flat. You have oil slightly negative. Nat gas is taking a tumble down about a couple percent on the session. And uh, mega caps are strong. You have strength gapping up in the likes of Amazon, uh, Google, Microsoft. Apple's under a little bit of pressure, down 0.7. NVIDIA is strong. Semiconductors are seeing some flow, some liquidity flow. Slight green price action in some of the marijuana stocks, although canopy growth is negative. We're seeing some of the consumer discretionary stocks bounce, except for Tesla. A little bit of strength in some Chinese equities. But really, it's mainly uh, the mega caps again and a few handful of large cap stocks that are bouncing. So at the moment, we have the uh, QQQ market up here. This is the hourly chart of the Qs. And you can see we had that big sell-off on Friday, closing us right at the lower boundary wedge. And now we're actually bouncing off of that wedge pattern. And uh, could be a bit louder. Let's just try fixing this. Let me adjust my mic so I'm speaking into it. But basically, yeah, we're, we're seeing now the markets gap up across the board and there's a couple resistance points we're running into. First things first, we're trying to attack this gap window. Obviously, everyone's watching this gap fill. So it's a pretty big gap up. I don't like chasing gaps that's on the long side. Gap ups are technically more likely to get faded. Now, you will have some minor resistance at this little gap window here on the queues. But really where I'm looking for a potential short is right in this vicinity you can see these two pivot high rejection points and then you drag that across and you actually have a couple other ones right in this zone here that's probably where there's much much more resistance on the chart so that's kind of where i'm looking to fade this qqq market right in around the pierce of this 443 zone that's where i'd personally look to short it now the important thing about market sessions like today when you gap up Obviously, there's a chance of a trend continuation, especially when oil's negative energy is softening up here. Um, we'll have to monitor yields. If yields soften up at all, then this provides a backdrop for the market to absolutely rip higher. And especially with the VIX being crushed. So what we need to watch out for is we need to look for basically a 10-minute close above this gap window. If you do, then you could likely push for this gap fill and obviously that upper wedge pattern right now we're just chopping in a wedge on the cues you could be forming a potential head and shoulders pattern that needs a little bit more data but you could easily float back to the high end of this wedge and chop until you get a bigger directional break we haven't had a breakdown we haven't had a breakout but the apex is still a few days away and uh, we're just gonna have to see how things progress small caps right now are getting a little bit of a minor bounce across the board you do have uh, the NASDAQ outperforming everything right now. QQQ is up 0.88, S&P is up 0.81, and the Russell's up 0.18. One of the reasons the Russell's lagging right now is because yields are strong. So I think as long as we, uh, as long as we um, see the uh, the yields continue to remain firm, that should put pressure on the equity market. Uh, Bringer Bear, thanks for just signing up. <clears throat> so we're just going to take it slow and see how things shape up here. And yes, you would be uh, grandfathered in. So right now the QQQ is coming up into a little bit of its resistance. You may get a little bit of a pullback. Look for some shorts off of this area markets are open guys markets are open
Let's see QQQ finding initial rejection. Probably will likely get a bounce. You're seeing some strength coming back into Apple at this point. The team is working on sending your welcome email, Ninja Bear. All right, so Qs are coming in a touch here, but they probably will get a bounce back to the highs. I do anticipate a bounce, but you're seeing weakness creeping back into Amazon. Amazon's pretty much almost gone negative. Nat gas still struggling. All sectors of the S&P are green at the moment, so we're still seeing, but Apple's breaking down. Russell's still trying to press a little bit higher here. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. All right, more weakness creeping into Apple. Apple's now down 0.81%. Qs are still getting faded. This is a big, big breakdown here occurring in the in Apple's chart. Look at that technical breakdown. Head and shoulders arguably has triggered. Support on Apple's right in this one seven pierce of 174. So we may have a day trade long on Apple. Keep that uh, chart on watch. There is some potential entries on Apple that I'm eyeing up. Nat gas trying to find some support here off of this 190. LAC again, nice gap up. Let's take a look at LAC. Small caps are actually trying to catch a bid here. Yeah, decent little move up 2% on the session. We'll see if it holds. The Russell 2000, we'll keep that in there. NVIDIA is still just uh, holding sideways. Apple's coming in a bit. Microsoft uh, still up 0.83%. Google's had a nice bounce. Meta's still trying to bounce higher here. So the QQQ slightly faded, still showing some strength, still seeing oil slightly down by about half a percent, that gas down by about uh, 2.16. No real trades yet. Tesla is certainly weak on the session at the moment. The VIX obviously down. QQQ getting faded more at the moment. The Qs are getting faded more. I do anticipate a bounce, guys. We can potentially go long very shortly here. Apple, I'm still watching. Don't want to go long yet on the Russell. I would likely more fade the Russell. Probably in, uh, even at this range is interesting. At the top of this range, I think we could look for some shorts on the Russell 2000 IWM. So right around that 200 hole number, a pierce of 200, there is some decent resistance. Qs keep getting faded at the moment. Oil's trying to bounce. Palantir's AMD's now negative down by 1. Tesla's down by 1.3. Apple's down by 1.4. LVGN, LGVN up 31. Neo's up slightly. Pfizer's slightly green. Bank of America up 2.5. That's a nice move. DJT, so Trump stock actually down quite sharply again. Let's take a look at that and see if we have any sort of a play on it. It's down another 10.4%. And you're coming up into this gap fill as well as your uh, impulse green candle breakout. So we could potentially see a reversal in this zone on DJT. 
Keep your eye on this one. It's a high risk spec play, but I am liking the fact that we've stair stepped our way up on the one minute chart. I'm going to look for an entry on this one. All right, guys, I'm going to go long this DJT. This is high risk, high risk. Just got filled at 29.05, 29.05, high risk trade, lighter share size. It's down on the session. They could easily keep selling this name. Basically, my risk is going to be a stop loss below the low of day. So 28.29. Again, high risk, high, high risk. Not for the faint of heart. But believe it or not, if the markets catch a bounce, this one could try to fill its gap all the way up to the upside here. And we're seeing it bounce already. We're already up about 1.7%. Take a look at that. That's a nice little stair step its way up. Come on. Keep pressing. Look at Apple's big bounce. Qs are now trying to firm up. So we're long DJT. Nice move on Lulu. Yep, Lulu's up a few percent here. A couple 2.12%. Good morning, good morning, everyone. NVIDIA pushing down, yep. But Q's, uh, just remember, that often during a gap up, you get the first fadeable reaction, which is what we're seeing now. Then you typically get a bounce that retraces at least you know 50% of this move. So I anticipate a bounce to at least 50%, and then we got to monitor to see, do we try putting in a higher high? Obviously, Apple was weak. That's had a nice bounce. So I do think the Q's will still push up here, guys. I do think the Qs will still push up. And that means the S&P, that likely means Tesla. Tesla's still weak on the session, down 1.89% and falling. NVIDIA's catching a really big bid there, guys. NVIDIA is. I expect small caps probably to be faded at some point, especially if yields remain firm. Right now, uh, the tenure is up over 2% on the session. No real economic data today that's going to influence things. But tomorrow, we could see a late-day session sell because tomorrow we actually have Powell speaking. Jerome Powell is set to come out. <coughs> All right, so... We're just long this DJT, Trump's SPAC company, and slightly green, but with a stop loss pretty much just at the low of day, just in case. We were green. Up, we're up about a couple percent off of that spike and uh, probably should have taken some profits, and now it's coming in. So we had a 2.5% win in our hand, and we did not take it. I was looking for more because this is down about 11%. I am seeing the Qs trying to firm up here, but definitely uh, showing some weakness. Qs are still trying to hold up. Tesla's still at the low of day. Really not firming up at all on Tesla. There's a gap fill on Tesla that we probably could get a little bit of a bounce, which is sitting at just a pierce of 165. A pierce of 165, there is a gap fill on Tesla that is sort of intriguing on the long side. Google just went slightly negative. Probably gets a bounce off of its gap. So still holding this DJT, guys. QQQ still trying to firm up at the moment. Anything else anyone else is looking at, feel free to type it in the chat box. I can pull it up on the chart. So I'm just scanning things here. You still have NVIDIA strong, AMD weak, Tesla weak, MSTR is down 1.8. Mara is seeing some more sellers. 
Google, Amazon, slightly green. Meta's up 0.76. I'm seeing some resource-based stocks like EQT, um, AR. They're actually showing some signs of strength despite Nat Gas being weak. So maybe there's a scenario where Nat Gas can actually firm up. Snapchat down 1%, Carvana down 1.5%, Intel's getting a bounce today, Datadog, JP Morgan's getting a nice 2.3% bounce off of its harsh Friday decline. You can see the markets are pushing up in the near term. Guys, just one second, I have to take a phone call. I'll jump on if uh, this trade changes.
Hey guys, we're just back here. So we've seen the Qs have that nice terrific bounce. You've got more than a 50% retrace off of that initial sell off. Now we're at a big inflection point. So we're either going to get a continuation move to try to press us into this next 443 resistance, or we're actually going to gap and crack and try to potentially test this a uh, little bit of a gap, um, gap fill. A little bit of a tough thing to say at the moment because the dollar is actually trying to turn green and the tenure is continuing to march higher. I'm finding a little hard pressed that this market may actually see some more sell side pressure. So if we look at the Russell as well, that one again is trying to uh, find some near term sellers. And I do think that we could run into some some downside here, especially in the more sensitive yield market stocks like the small caps. So I think that shorts can be favored entries. If you're short in the queues, you probably just use the stop loss as your high of day, 441.55. The Russell, if you're looking to short the Russell, just keep it that uh, tight EMA113. This DJT looks like we're going to take a small loss on this trade. It is very getting very close to stopping me out. So I'm not adding to the position of just a one entry. Yeah, Bart's saying uh, SPWR keeps falling down. Yeah, it is. And again, it's just uh, weak with... Uh, with the with the yields pushing just one second I'm getting another phone call guys sorry about this
Sorry about that, guys. All right, so we got stopped out of the DJ, DJT for a little bit of a loss there. My apologies. QQQ just still stuck in a range here. Really hasn't given us a uh, bullish price action to go long, and it hasn't given us a bearish signal to go short. So right now, whichever way we break of the wedge pattern, if we break to the upside, look for calls, look for longs. If we break to the downside, look for puts, look for shorts. Okay. Again, I still think that there's going to be some pretty decent sized resistance right at this previous little zone that we discussed. Major pivot, major consolidation range, another few pivot zones here, another breakdown range, rejection, rejection. So there still, still should be some sellers in that region. If we start to break up, that's where the next resistance lies, right around this 443, 20, 443, 50 zone. <clears throat> Yeah, and again, solar stocks, a lot of the uh, sensitive rate stocks like Tesla, solar, they're just uh, under a lot of pressure because of the fact that uh, interest rates are still pressing higher here. Tenure yield up 2.3% on the session. All right, NVIDIA is coming up into a big daily chart gap fill. There might be a little bit of a short trade on NVIDIA. Let's take a peek at this name. So you can see NVIDIA, this 906.36 is a gap resistance, which we're tagging right now. I am looking at a possible short on NVIDIA, but I'm waiting for around 907. I'll potentially pick up a start a short around 907. You can actually see a small sell-off. And I am going to end the stream a little bit earlier today, guys, just a heads up. What's your take on Nat Gas? Leo asking. And Chris is also saying, I have Nat Gas breaking a four hour trend line. Has a lot of work to recapture. Personally, I think it goes lower. Yeah, you know, I mean, Nat Gas is one of those names that tries breaking out and then it just keeps getting rejected and looks like it is going lower. There's a four hour bearish pattern on Nat Gas that is on watch for a potential trigger. There is a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head. So the bearish pattern that we're watching on that gas is potentially this left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Obviously, you haven't triggered the neckline quite yet. I'm just going to remove this so you can see it clearly. But we've tested that neckline right now. So it's a pretty important level to watch for the NAT gas price action. Obviously, if we even if we break that, there will be some support in this range. But right now, NatGas is trying to see some technical weakness at this area. So it's a big, big thing. If we break this area and try to go for 186, we really don't want to lose it because this four-hour downside pattern could show some pretty big weakness. Audio improved. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy May. Google pressing for the highs, Microsoft still at the highs, Apple still lagging, Nvidia's pulled back slightly. I'm still not in a short trade, but looking at it on an interesting side. I'm even thinking about QQQ puts because we're now testing the high of day. I'm just trying to see what those cons are priced at right now and what strike I like, potentially 440s. 440s right now are sitting at right about a dollar oh eight to dollar oh six. Yep, all the lithium stocks are getting a nice bid today. All the lithium stocks are getting a really big bid. All right, guys, I'm seeing the uh, the dollar ripping here, trying to push higher. I'm going to take a QQQ 440 put. QQQ 440 put. Got filled at $1.14. QQQ 440 put, 0 DTE. Now, gas trying to firm up. You can see NVIDIA pulling back. We're just at the bottom of the wedge. Let's see if we can break this bottom of the wedge. We tried breaking out. All right, cons are up to $1.26 already. So they are trying to get a little bit of a move to the upside. I 
they're trying to save this wedge pattern here nat gas trying to firm up bitcoin still slightly green tesla still weak on the session more weakness creeping back into nvidia microsoft's trying to see some sellers at the moment meta's still holding up tesla's trying to bounce all right, cons are basically back to break even again on the QQQ 440. Again, we haven't officially broke the wedge pattern, but we did try having an attempt at breaking out, which makes me think that we should see lower price action, especially with the yields and the dollar pressing here. All right, cons are back up slightly. Would you short NVIDIA or wait? Well, at the moment, semis are the stronger sector of the queues, which is why I'm not picking on them right now. So if you look at the ETFs, broad-based ETFs, you have the SOXX actually outperforming the queues, outperforming the SPY, outperforming the Russell. So, you know, I'm not really picking on, there's still some weak components of the NASDAQ, which is why I'm picking on that. And I, I don't know, I just, uh, it's a tough short on the semis right now intraday. I prefer the Qs. Can you get away with the NVIDIA? For sure you could, but I was looking at 907. You know, obviously, since I'm short the Qs, if the Qs fall, likely NVIDIA will go down as well. But uh, at the moment, they're just a bit of a tougher short than the actual indice itself. And I like the zero DTE aspect. It's a little more riskier, but um, definitely... Uh, Gives you a little bit more alpha. All right, we are starting to see the QQQ come down here. Just a touch. We're up about 10 cents a con. Nat gas getting a nice little bid. So that's good to see. Trying to firm up across the board. Netflix seeing some weakness at the moment. Bigger drop there in the queues, guys. So we're now in the driver's seat on this trade. Contracts are all the way up to $1.38. I want these puts in the money though. 440s are not that difficult to get in the money. You know, your gap fill, if they gap and crack this market, which uh, typically when you have negative headlines across the weekend and then they gap the markets up positively, they typically institutions will use that as a sell side event to use all that gap up liquidity, get people to chase, and now they dump it on. Cons are at $1.50, guys. I'm pairing back. I just sold half at $1.50. Sold half at a dollar fifty a contract. Look at this. Now they're up to a dollar sixty seven, guys. Four forty puts are almost in the money. Come on, give it to us. We're about five cents. Four forty puts are in the money, guys. I just secured full profits. Dollar eighty six a con. Nice win there. Beautiful, beautiful win on that four forty put, guys. We crushed that one from a dollar fourteen. To a dollar eighty-six. That's a huge, huge win there. That's a whole seventy-two cents a share, almost fifty percent on the trade. Beautiful. All right, let's reevaluate things now. So now that we've taken a nice little win, we've had one loser on that DJT, but this QQQ put more than takes care and satisfies things. So QQQ four forty puts. Good job if you took that with us. AMD dumping. Yeah, AMD's been weak, actually. Even when the market was green, AMD's been down. You know, it was down actually 1%. It had a really nice bounce with the Qs. But this one does look like a potential fading opportunity as well. Let's see if there's any sort of contracts that are worth getting into. What are we setting at right now? 162.50 zone. So 160... Did we hit a low of 160? Yeah, we actually pierced 160. So there's a scenario we could actually come lower. Look at NAC gas spiking here. I don't know if there's more geopolitical headlines coming through at the moment. But there's a 160 put on AMD expiring April 19th. That looks pretty enticing. Let's give it a whirl, guys. I just want to see if the Qs get a little minor bounce here. Dixie's actually ripping. Yields are continuing. All right, I'm going to take a 160 put on AMD. I'll let you know when I'm filled. I'll let you know. I'm still just waiting to see if the Qs get a little minor bounce. All right, guys, 160 put. I got filled at $2.70 a con on AMD. AMD. 
two dollars and seventy cents a con 160 put april 19th expiry and this could even be a swing trade guys this could be a swing trade look at us fall guys look at us fall Tesla's trying to get a bid. Microsoft's coming in pretty sharp at the moment. Big dump on the queues. Anyone still holding those 440s you're actually printing now? So a little bit more red starting to show on the screen. And why are we seeing red price action? You're seeing Microsoft starting to break down at the moment. Nice trade. Thanks, Urjeet. Appreciate that. Great move. Thank you, Daisy. Uh, sorry, Leo. I forgot to answer your question there. Um, what is your near-term target for NAT gas if it breaks down? Well, 186 is really big near-term support. That's the level that I've been using. 186 is uh, near-term support. But even this 190 range is a decent area of support for NAT gas. You are trying to create higher lows. You have had impulse breakouts, higher daily closes, a higher weekly close over the last couple of weeks. So even though we're seeing a bit of a decline today, NatGas is still showing signs of stair-stepping its way up with stronger consecutive weekly closes. All right, guys, that's a nice trade on AMD as well so far. That was a really good trade on AMD. I just exited those cons on AMD. We have a lot of time, but they took them from 270 a contract all the way to 410. So I just sold those AMD 160 puts, 410 a con. Beautiful little trade. Okay, you, right now they're sitting at about four bucks, but I am all out, sold them at 410 a contract. Actually, sorry, I think I just looked at the wrong strike. My apologies, guys. I did look at the wrong strike. They were sold at 295 a con 295 a contract i was looking at the wrong strike zone my apologies so i was wondering why those jumped so much anyway so back in the swing of things a couple of winners on us for the session with the queues with uh um, amd and then obviously we did take a small loss earlier on but the qqq that was a nice trade all right, oil breaking down here, down 1.3%. Seeing some harsh selling in oil. Let's take a look to see if XOM or energy stocks are a fading opportunity. How's XLE at the moment? That's still holding on to some slight gains. So I'm actually probably going to look to maybe fade some of these energy stocks. I'm just trying to see which name I like best. On the short side, you do have rig falling. Let's see Chevron. Chevron still just slightly negative on CVX. Since we're putting in now potentially lower highs on the queues, that makes us vulnerable to actually falling. There is this potential head and shoulders pattern that is developing. And we haven't triggered and broken the neckline just yet, but we have to watch because the queues have given up the lion's share of their gains today. And that's a little bit of cause for concern. Well, the QQQ Bringer Bear, that was a that one you could have followed. That one you had plenty of opportunity to get in. Obviously, it is difficult. There's about a five second lag between my voice and the stream. But the QQQ put you could have easily followed. AMD, yeah, a little bit tougher. But even at this level, you can just get a re-entry. Pretty much we're re-entered. I still like the 160 puts for April 19th. Those probably will hit, but just keep a tight tight stop, right? But a lot of the times the indice, the indice positions you can easily enter. A lot of the times you get better fills than I do. There's been times where members make absolutely much, much more and viewers make more because they get better entries. So it goes both ways, right? Sometimes I'll call out a play and then it'll dump. And yeah, maybe you don't get an entry that's as good, but um, a lot of the times you'll actually get better entries. 
But that QQQ, there was plenty of time. You know, we even had a little bit of a bounce teetering on the neckline before the big decline happened that put the cons deeply in the money. So don't be um, discouraged if you missed out. There will be plenty of more. The best thing to try to do is recognize that, you know what, there's another trade around the corner. Even if you miss one, there will be another one. Jody got in the QQQ. Beautiful. Yeah, a few of you got in. Urgy. Thanks, Daisy. That's a wonderful comment. All right, guys. So Dixie's uh, taking a bit of a breather. It is slightly green up 0.13%. But the important thing to recognize is this 10-year yield, guys. I'm going to keep stressing this. If you don't understand bonds and what interest rates are doing, I mean, that's a problem. 10-year yield just ripping yet again. The 10-year yield is continuing to rip. IWM is actually negative. That one's probably going to be a fadeable short opportunity again. It's continuing to give up a lot of its price action. And that gas trying to stair step its way up. Qs are coming back in. I think now we can look for Q's potential shorting opportunity. Even the Russell might be a better play if we're looking to short because it is way more sensitive to rates. But QQQ is into a short range right now. You can see this pivot zone. This is where we're running into some near-term resistance. There's another little potential trend channel that we could chop in today. If we draw that, you can see you've hit a double top high here. Now you've hit the low. You haven't filled the technical gap yet on the Qs. So Qs are still trying to look potentially for that big liquidity zone. A lot of liquidity sitting there. Find it hard pressed that market makers won't want to Peel that back a bit. It does look like Microsoft's going to give up the lion's share of its gains today and go negative. It does look like Microsoft potentially could go negative and maybe even follow Apple. All right, if you're wanting to short the cues again, this is the zone and just use the stop loss. I'm going to look for a potential, let's see, let's see what these puts. I'm looking at 439s now and 438s. So 439 puts are sitting right now at about 90 cents, 90 cents. What are 438s doing? They're at about 60, 60 cents. 438s takes us basically just back below this gap fill. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Right now, the only thing kind of making me just think about this trade twice is the semis. All right, guys, I'm going to take a stab. 438 put filled at 62 cents a contract. 62 cents, 438 put on the Qs. 62 cents a con. And this is just a starter position. I will add to it if we push up to the high end of this range. So 441.50, I'd add to it. If you want to use this high pivot as your stop loss, that is fine by me too. That is technically where you should stop out if price action starts to go above it. But I would look to personally um, probably accumulate a little bit more in this range if we do go lower. The Russell's trying to bounce here. Dixie's still trying to break out of a higher range. Look at that Dixie. That one's still trying to push a little bit higher. Obviously, the Qs are now firming up a bit. Again, if you get a close above this zone, that's technically where you stop out. But I might just look to accumulate another a few more contracts if we push up. I'm seeing Microsoft starting to wane a little bit here. How far for... Uh, Anonymous is saying I'm already in the 439 put at 80 cents. That's good. That's really good. That's much, much better. Yep, you're already up on that trade, so manage that trade. 
Uh, Bart is asking, how far could the QQQ fall? Um, let me just see my other chart. Just give me a second here. I think the QQQ is probably going to stay above its 50-day moving average today. That's probably where you fall to. That's going to be your big um, support zone. So your 50-day is sitting at 437.78. That's kind of my downside move of the day where the Qs could fall. All right, we are starting to see the Qs come in a bit more. So that's good for our 438 put. I'm actually just going to move this red line down to the 438 strike zone. And again, anyone that hasn't checked out my tradingcapital.ca Discord trading service, please feel free to do so at tradingcapital.ca. All right, Qs are coming in nice, guys. So we're riding those. We're already up um, from 62 cents to 79 cents a contract. Now 80 cents. The Qs are falling. Potential lower high in place. We're looking for another lower low to kind of solidify a potential downtrend today. So from my experience, when you get, so this is your, your high of day. This was your first low. Then you pushed up, made a lower high. Then you push down, made a lower low. From my experience, whenever you make three lower lows on the day in like the first you know, hour or two, it typically starts a downtrend. We typically see more price action, lower price action. So again, if we take out this low, from my experience, you typically see a much, much heavier downtrend resume, and that's not a good sign. So Qs are falling even more now, now up to 92 cents a con, we're up 30 cents. Good job for anyone that has taken that with us. I'm going to start scaling out. I just sold half at 92 cents a contract, guys. Sell half, and then I'm going to ride the rest down with basically a break even. But we netted a nice 30 cents a contract there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So we're still riding those 438s down took profits on half of the position let's see if there's any long trades we can actually uh try to find and seek out anyone looking at any potential long opportunities uh chris is saying pll trying to break out all right chris let's look at pll thank you thank you yeah lithium stocks are actually sir whoa it's up already 34 percent. i mean you can argue to say it has broken out already but i can see you're you're still trying to get a continuation move intraday that's what you're saying by it's trying to break out again and push higher yeah so i mean the look at the difference between these two charts qqq lower highs and lower lows then you have this pll here's your low higher low higher low so this is actually looking very very bullish likely going to continue higher the only thing is it's had a very large extension move and if the indices start to break down a little bit more then you run the risk of seeing some lower price action so I think as long as you stay above this key zone here, 1658, this PLL will likely push a bit higher in the near term. QQQ trying to firm up yet again. Qs are trying to firm up. Nvidia is still holding strong, but you had AMD, Neo, Rivian, Tesla, Apple all negative. Mars is down 3.3. Ford slightly negative. Bank of America has been faded slightly here. The Dixie's pushing up again for a potential new high of day. QQQ still trying to firm up. We still have Amazon, Google, Meta all showing some positive signs. Microsoft still getting faded here, guys. So Microsoft is really starting to weigh in on the Qs a touch.
Uh, hey, Crimtonics. Yes, I do have some swing trading stocks that I like on the long side. There's some utility names, some healthcare names that I'm I'm interested in on the long side. Obviously, I have to keep some alpha for my members. There's some China names in the KWeb ETF. If you do yourself a favor and you look through some XLV charts, XLU charts, and then KWeb charts, those are some names that I potentially like on the bullish side. As well as I've been a big proponent of NAC gas equities. I think that uh, accumulating some NAC gas resource stocks in this range likely makes a lot of sense. You could have some um, follow through in the in the mar in the marijuana space with political chatter, the elections, but those are also rate sensitive stocks. So if the Russell and S and P starts to break down, you know you could see some weakness. Guys, yields are just ripping here, which makes me super, super bearish across the whole board. The fact that rates are just, uh, interest rates are just absolutely flying today off of basically no data is a little concerning. That is telling you the bond market is pricing in more inflation. Look at this uh, Russell chart. It's putting in a bear flag pattern intraday, and it looks like it wants to go lower. Daily chart of the Russell has not seen any sort of pretty price action. You have this massive gap fill all the way to the downside here sitting at 194.14 which actually believe it or not could be hit today so anonymous you would have banked on that 439 put if you took it hopefully you were able to secure a little bit of profits Still have half that uh, QQQ 438, took profits at 92 cents. They've fallen about 20 cents from there. But I do think that we still could go lower. Look at the Russell continuing to break down. And again, the Dixie's making new highs on the session. Dixie is making new highs on the session, guys. Anonymous is saying looking to enter QQQ puts. Yeah, I think that's a smart thing. We're clearly in a bit of a downtrending session. Look at the Russell guys breaking down here. That's a harsh technical breakdown in small caps. And uh, small caps are already down 0.42%. Qs have faded from the highs, giving up the majority of its gains, looking to potentially go negative as well. Cons are back up to 84 cents. Still a lot of weakness. Bitcoin just went negative. It's now down 0.6%, 0.7% and falling. Microsoft still looking exceptionally heavy at the moment. Take a look at that uh, massive gap and crack on Microsoft. And what's important about this price action, okay? I'm just going to erase these little trend lines. Microsoft had every chance to try to fill the bear gap and it got rejected. That's a bearish sign. That's a very bearish sign. Very, very bearish sign. All right, guys, QQQ puts are still up about 20 cents a con. Let's see if we can get some more downside. There are some levels where I like on the long side, but um, we're just not there yet. Uh, it's Common Sense is saying uh, Ulta weakness when Elf is showing strength. Don't know how to read that. Okay. So a couple of the beauty companies, Ulta Beauty, Elf. Let's see those charts. And again, you know, it's hard to uh, do a day by day correlation. Typically, a lot of stocks do correlate together when they're in the same sector and basket. So, I mean, comparing the correlation between those two companies, it's tough because Ulta sells so much makeup. They sell many things, whereas Elf just sells, sells uh, basically one, their own product. So, definitely a little bit of a different business model. Same sector, same uh, industry, but definitely a lot of variations in their business model. So, to give a one-to-one -one correlation is sometimes difficult. But if we're looking at this Elf chart, it's sitting just above that EMA 113 on the daily chart. Let's look at Ulta. Yeah, Ulta breaking down. So Ulta is showing a bit of a daily bear flag. 
continuation this is likely going to go lower a lot of people are sitting at this gap fill waiting but i think you based off of this pattern alt is probably going i'm just trying to see here i mean there is some weekly chart support you're hitting that ema but i would be more inclined to wait for alta to hit this upsloping trend line which would put alta potentially hitting call it about 400 404 in around this range but it is looking like it wants to go lower. All right, guys, those QQQ puts are about to stop me out on break even here at 62 cents a con. I just got stopped out on the remaining half break even, break even on this on those cons. So we took profits on half and we just broke even. So it's a nice little win on the session. Another little win, but I'm all out of those 438 puts for break even. And now this is a scenario where, again, we're creating another little bit of a wedge pattern. And which way is it going to break? I think if you get start getting above this 440 strike zone, you got to look to start potentially closing those um, those puts. But I'm all out of those 438s for break even on the second half. Still could be a bearish wedge. Russell's getting a bounce though, which is a little bit concerning in the near term. Nat Gas trying to stair step its way up. Take a look at IQ. IQ is also one that's uh, just been kind of trying to stair step its way up. Sorry, that's the wrong chart. IQ. That one's uh, had a big up over 4% on the session today. Nice to see. And obviously, Sun Power is getting hit a bit today. SPWR. Let's look at Netflix. Netflix today also. Uh, Slightly green, looking like it's probably going to run into some distributive properties right now, or practices, sorry. Oil still trading below 84 a barrel, down about 1%. So Daisy May is commenting on Sephora, similar to Ulta, showing similar trends. Yeah, Sephora is actually strong. Sephora is strong right now. So Ulta is probably fucked up somehow. Obviously gapping down, still in their earnings, showing weakness. All right, a little bit of a rejection trying to occur on the Qs as well as the Russell 2000 here. Definitely some near-term weakness. So we are seeing the cues coming down. This could be the bearish wedge pattern breakdown. It's looking very heavy and potentially likely to break down here, guys. Let's just be careful. They like to suck people in on put side action. Guys, I'm actually looking at calls off of this range. I'm seeing the Dixie softening. Yields are taking a bit of a breather. I think that uh, they might create a little bit of a fake pattern here. Again, we just got to watch it carefully because if you break this area, it's not looking good for the overall equity markets. There's still actually this trend line that I'm watching now from this pivot low back on Friday. 
So as long as you hold in this range, there's still a chance we can push up. Let's see. Guys, I just took 441 call on the queues, zero DT. I got filled at 56 cents a con, high risk. I'm just gonna use my stop if we break below this this key wedge pattern, but I took a 441 call at filled at 56 cents. You can even get a better fill right now. So 441 call on the cues. And again, this is my stop loss. We get a one minute close below this area. I will stop out on the trade again. Contracts are even now down to 53 cents so you can get a better entry if that's what you choose. Again, it's high risk because we are putting in lower highs, but we're at some near-term technical support. And I am seeing the dollar running into a bit of resistance here, as well as yields. Yields have kind of almost put in a little bit of a near-term high, which is why we're seeing small caps trying to carve out a bottom here. Let's see if the Qs can break out of this range. Again, even when the pattern is looking bearish, you still got to look at intermarket analysis, yields, currencies, oils, energies, other intraday stocks. And you got to really try to shift based off of what you're seeing intermarket analysis because every bearish pattern can fail, every bullish pattern can fail. And obviously, we do things based off of technical analysis. And most people are shorting this bearish wedge at the moment. And we just picked up some calls off of that support zone and we're already up about five cents a contract. So we're looking to see if we can get a pop out of this wedge. Do I think we can go lower? Yes, but there's still a scenario we can actually push all the way back up to the high of this channel, which would be around 441.30, 441.40. And then you could fall lower. You could still put in a lower high, lower high, lower high, even while moving up. And then that's just the way that market makers burn all that intraday theta away. And it causes, you know, a lot of people who are shorting this pattern can get caught offside. Again, this could fail. This could absolutely just get flushed right back lower. But based off of yields taking a bit of a breather, small caps getting back above its little breakdown trend line here. And yields also softening a touch here. We could see the market give us a little bit of a push at the moment, though. Trying to break down again. We're down about four cents now, a contract, and we are breaking down. Still holding technical support. Let's see if we push lower. All right, they are trying to take us down here. Microsoft is about to go negative on the session. So, not a good sign here at the moment. But again, Microsoft's coming into its gap fill, so there will be some buyers there. Just recognize that. But there is a bit of a breakdown occurring in the queues at the moment. So we are down on this trade at the moment. But they're trying to... It's not an easy technical breakdown just yet. Russell's still trying to carve a little bit of a right shoulder potential. Queues are coming in a bit more now, guys. Alright, so we are losing on this trade at the moment. Again, it was just our first entry. New low of day on the queues inbound. All right, there's a big breakdown. Guys, I'm going to add to my QQQ. I just got filled at 40 cents a contract. 40 cents a contract. 441s I added. It's high risk. My average is now sitting at... 49 cents a con, 49 cents a contract for the 441 calls. All right, guys, we're now at 10.30. We've just been trading for over an hour. Cryptonix is asking about the halving. Um, again, I've mentioned that in a couple of my free videos. Since we're just day trading here, I don't want to get into too much of the macro swing trading investing questions just quite yet. Um, but just to quickly give you a little bit of inside perspective, there is a Bitcoin having video. And I do think that um, if you follow historical patterns, Bitcoin still should see a bit more downside. 
purely based off of if you understand the halving and what typically occurs with how the reward for miners gets cut in half, that makes the mining process more difficult. If a process gets more difficult in the near term, sure it's more lucrative over the medium and long term, but in the near term when the mining rewards gets chopped in half, that typically causes potential liqu liquidation and consolidation in the mining industry. And that's why you look at some of the mining equity stocks like Mara. Mara's just been pretty much, for lack of a better word, dog shit compared to the entire crypto equity stocks. And that's part and parcel due to the fact that it's losing half of its reward along with all the other miners. And there could be some balance sheet issues. They could have to sell off Bitcoin to potentially firm up their balance sheet. Maybe they get through some sort of liquidation. Look at this QQQ bounce, guys. So nice little ad there. We're actually now up about five cents a con. So nice little bounce there occurring in the queues. And we are trying to push up. But typically, if, if miners run into some near-term headwinds with the halving, they often have to liquidate, which is often what you see ahead of the halving. You see liquidations, forced liquidations. And that's the, that's the big key, is forced liquidations from the miners because their uh, reward is cut in half, and they often have to get bought out or consolidate with other miners. So that's typically why often the halving is a bit of a buy-the-rumor, sell-the-news event initially no doubt it has long-term positive ramifications but obviously we've had a stellar move in crypto and anyone chasing basically into this all-time high resistance at six just above 69k if you've been chasing there and trying to accumulate a long position you're almost making the same mistake as to what happened back in uh, what was it 2021 what was the previous high there yeah, 2021, November, where you had that few weeks, there was roughly four weeks of uh, distributive price action, people buying that all-time high price, and then they just absolutely slaughtered Bitcoin. And, uh, and keep in mind, Bitcoin's been showing more dominance than the entire crypto market. So that's an important thing to recognize as well. When you pull up the total crypto market cap, that's triggered a bearish pattern. I'll actually pull it up here for us. So looking at the total crypto market cap, that's triggered a very bearish pattern on the four hour chart. You've triggered a head and shoulders on the four hour chart of this total crypto market cap. And how it's viewed is simply using this little neckline. And you can see that there's more downside likely set to occur in the total crypto market cap. You actually hit your downside target off of this move, but you're now putting in more bearish consolidation to potentially move a bit lower. And there's even another way you can draw this head and shoulders pattern. If you use this neckline, you can see we got rejected again today at this next trend line of resistance. And if we draw a measured move down of this pattern, that's about another 18, 19% move down from the neckline, which puts us down to about 1.85 trillion. All right, QQQ, we are down on that trade by about 5 cents. You got sold off pretty hard there. Rejection is clear. I'm still holding my QQQ441 calls at 49 cents a contract. So we are down slightly. So obviously the total crypto market cap is looking weak, but you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin really hasn't triggered that same sort of a bear pattern. It's still actually holding above its little neckline zone. But if Bitcoin starts to give it up, that's when you could really see a big, big flush in the entire crypto market cap because dominance has been clear in Bitcoin. Hopefully that helps. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, oil is basically trying to make a red to green reversal, not a good sign for equity markets. Yields are softening. So every time yields soften, dollars soften, it seems that oil just wants to press back higher. Nat gas trying to firm up again. Oil trying to firm up again. Netflix is looking like it wants to go negative. QQQ is trying to firm up a touch here. All right, guys, I'm going to stay with you guys for another 15 minutes. I'll keep the stream running, and but uh, I do have to hop off the mic since we've already closed a couple winners. We're now trading another one here, which we're slightly green by about $0.03 cents a contract. 
but we're looking for a move to 441 again, 441 strike zone, which is basically back to the high of this channel. You can clearly see we have broken this key trend on the Qs, which is never a good sign. Nvidia's weakening, giving it up here. Dollars trying to press a bit higher in the near term. Microsoft again has given up the lion's share of its gains. The VIX is popping. Nat gas is starting to rally some more. Guys, I may not stay in these 441 calls for the entire time. I'm probably going to look for a move back up to this this resistance area. Maybe this pivot high we get a retrace to. But somewhere in this range, if we can get a push, a quick push in the queues into this 439, 440 range, then I'll probably look to exit my calls for whatever they're worth at the at that point. Right now we're we're flat. Or we're actually, we're actually down about three cents. Tighter range in Apple, 175.50. Yeah, Apple's putting in a bit of a 10 minute bear flag down 1%, actually underperforming everything. On the daily chart, I mean, Apple's still putting in a bit of an inside day consolidation day. So if we look at Apple, obviously it is weak, bit of a bear flag forming, but really this is just an inside day. And you wanna see inside consolidation day. So that's your impulse green candle breakout on volume. And you can see Apple is uh, just trying to hold steady inside of that range. Qs are coming down, melting away a little bit more. Again, now we're down about eight cents a contract on those Qs, so that's unfortunate at the moment. Microsoft hitting its gap fill at the moment. It is still slightly green, ever so slightly. We'll keep Apple on watch. Qs are still seem to be just hanging on by a thread, but looking very, very weak in the near term. Again, the Dixie's trying to press higher, so that's probably not going to be helpful. Microsoft Meta curling down. Yields are still up 2.1, 2% respectively. Again, Apple's down 1%. That's weighing in on things quite tremendously. Meta went negative, ARM went negative. All right, Qs are trying to break down even more, guys. QQQ is trying to break down even more. Apple's catching a bid. Microsoft's trying to firm up off of that gap fill. QQQ, we're watching the Qs trying to firm up a touch here. There's a little bit of a bounce. Nice bounce coming in, guys. Nice bounce coming in. So we're now up slightly by about one cent. Again, remember the target I gave you in and around this 440 range, high 439s, low 440s. If we can retest and get above that, I'd probably look to uh, cut my QQQ puts. Right now we're up slightly by about three cents a contract. Okay. Again, we're still technically in a downtrend on the day. But we are trying to carve a bit of a bottom here. Notice how this was your low. You wicked below it, not a close below. Then you came back down to test it again, held. So bulls are holding this level, which is why we potentially could move up. Double bottom, and then you have a triple bottom. We need to get above that EMA 113. Dixie's still taking a breather. Bitcoin's back below 64.5.
Phil Ray's green, spy putting in lower high on the 15. Thanks for the comments, guys. Yep. Anonymous already made 1K today. Beautiful, beautiful. Anonymous, that's what I like to hear. That's awesome. Qs are still running into. Let's see some of these market movers, guys. Of the S&P. So you have some of the banking stocks across the board doing fairly well. Ralph Laurent, SMCI, Intel getting some bounces. Globe Life, Molina Healthcare, Salesforce still showing some weakness. Solar, uh, Palo Alto continuing to see weakness. That gas coming in slightly again. All right, Qs are still trying to firm up here, but running into some near-term resistance. Again, the dollar's trying to press a bit higher. Microsoft's trying to bounce. Apple's coming in. Seeing NVIDIA weakening. Meta's still falling pretty sharply. Amazon curling down. QQQ still trying to hold this support zone, right? This is a big, big level that we've tried coming down a few times now. If we continue to hold it, the bulls are going to want to try to snap this up. But as soon as we break it, because this is shaping up to be a bit of a bear flag, if we break this, you're going to have a pretty decent downward move. It's just a matter of do they give it one little facelift, rope in new long liquidity before they take it down. Again, you can see the measured move down of this little bear flag puts us all the way down to about 437 on the chart. So keep that on watch, but it really only gets triggered when we break it. Obviously, there's a lot of people seeing the same sort of bear pattern. Market makers love to rip it back to the high end of the range when people are piling in on the short side here. So there's obviously a risk, right? We've had a pretty decent down move from the high of day. Now trading near the lows, right above that gap fill. All right, they are trying to break it again. They are testing that key zone again. I'm down about 10 cents a contract at the moment. Microsoft right back down. Apple back down. Amazon's curling. Uh, it's Common Sense is saying CPNG, so Coupang come down but still strong today. I like it if it can hold above 21.30 this week. Golden Sachs with monster earnings. Urgy saying that. Thank you, Urgy. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, there you had that bear reaction on JP Morgan on Friday, and now you're having other bank stocks. So, I mean, it's quite interesting to see how they're so different across the board, right? A lot of people trade sympathy. They have There's, there's a lot of sympathy traders in the market. People expecting JP Morgan massive gap down. They're likely expecting the other banks to gap down, and then they gap up, gap up other banks. So, very interesting price action. Daisy May, thank you. Appreciate that. Your streams are the best. Hard to navigate the markets without you. Much appreciated. Appreciate all the comments, support. Even though we're not perfect, we have losing trades. We just try to do our best to give you some commentary day by day, minute by minute here. QQQ still made a new low of day, so the downtrend is still clearly intact, guys. The downtrend for the Qs is still a clearly in track, and uh, that means that we do have a downside target of four, potentially 437. Again, your 50-day moving average on the Qs is sitting at 437.75, which we're actually coming down to potentially test 
All right, guys, we may have to cut these QQQs on the next bounce here. There's an add level here. If you're looking to add, you could add here. Since we've only added twice to this position, I'm actually looking at potentially adding here. All right, I just added at 33 cents a con to my position. That's the final add. My average is now sitting at 42 cents a contract on the 441 calls. So I'm still down about 8 cents right now a contract. Getting a little bit of a bounce off this gap fill. Anonymous was stopped out. Yeah, that's the proper risk management prudent thing to do. Again, I gave myself maneuverability and added. But definitely a weak tape, right? Where the market has done the old gap and crack, where they gap it up and then they crack it to the downside. That's a huge, huge um, form of distribution that institutions use in a day to day basis. A big way of distributing the market. question is will we get any sort of a little pop typically when the market is up on the session it was cues were up almost 1% they were up 0.8% at the high here typically you will get a little bit of a facelift at some point I still like 441s I think we should get some near-term bounce here before we go lower All right, guys, so we're seeing the Qs still running into this resistance pivot. So it's acting like it's supposed to in a downtrend off of its resistance. If it can get above this previous pivot, I still think we can tap EMA and likely this 439.70 zone. Seeing volume increasing in this range on Microsoft and Apple. NVIDIA took a nice decline there. It is hitting some five-minute chart support. The daily, uh, or sorry, the intraday five-minute 50 and 200. Google Meta is still looking weak. Coming in sharply. Uh, Meta is not too far from its daily 7 moving average. Sorry, its daily 20 moving average, which is sitting at 506.37. So obviously when Meta starts to fall, it has a big, big influence on the market because even though its market cap is not one of the biggest companies, still obviously a mega cap. And one of the reasons why when stocks like Meta and NVIDIA fall, they affect them and Microsoft, they affect the market so much is because they skew, like Meta, for instance, has over 20% weighting in the communications ETF, XLC. So, I mean, when Meta starts to uh, fall, it drags down the entire XLC ETF, more so than most other stocks, and then that puts pressure on all the other communication-based stocks, like Google, and, and it continues to put pressure on the Qs and the NASDAQ. Same thing with NVIDIA. If NVIDIA falls, you know, it has such a large weighting in the SMH. All right, guys, new lows there on the queues. I'm probably looking to cut these puts here. I'm um, just trying to see if we can hold this channel and bounce. 
I don't want to lose this parallel channel, but we're at the low of the channel. I hate closing trades at the lower boundary support zone. You know, this is the channel we've been chopping in as of now. So we are technically at some support, but looking very, very weak on the session. So those 438 puts, anyone still riding them? Nice job. They did go in the money. But again, I'm still holding 441s for a hopeful bounce. Again, I'm down about uh, 12 cents a contract, 13 cents a contract here. Not looking good at the moment. Again, the downside target off of that bear flag was 437-ish. And we're kind of almost there. We're about a buck away. How you feeling about Arsenal's chances? Oh, <laughs> it's common sense. You're getting... <laughs> you're getting... <laughs> You're you're driving the dagger. That was a rough one. That was a rough one on the weekend. I was so happy that Liverpool lost. It was looking juicy. And now Man City's sneaking in the back door and trying to take things. Oh, you're trying to crush my art here. It's common sense. That was a disappointing game. That was a really disappointing game. Yeah, City does look convincing. I know their their odds just swung. You know, we had the goal. We still have the goal differential. But we had a chance. If we won, you know, the fate was in our hands yesterday. If we won every single game, we uh, we would have been able to secure the champ, the the league title, the EPL. If we won every single game moving forward, but um, yeah, it's just not how the cookie goes sometimes, right? Now that we have to rely on the rest of our games as well as other teams, we need City and Liverpool to keep dropping points here. Are QQQ getting a nice little bounce off that low boundary support? My cons are sitting at 42 cents. Google Meta trying to bounce. Microsoft Apple firming up here. Come on, Qs. We just want a little bit more of a bounce to get out of this. This little bit of a trade here. But Qs are still struggling quite uh, immensely here. Still struggling. Yeah, <laughs> you were telling one of your friends, I don't think Arsenal will choke this week. And my journalist buddy was like, if they do, Lose, it's over. I know we've always had this little bit of a a choking scenario or big clutch moments. We come down and, uh, yeah, it's never a good sign. Let's look at NVIDIA for BART. So BART wants to look at an NVIDIA daily chart. We're also just seeing the cues move up. Basically, we're still down about... Uh, six cents a contract on those 441 calls. Uh, NVIDIA is tricky. It's going through a bit of a distributor process. Obviously, it's still the household name. But NVIDIA is just flagging sideways here. A couple different patterns at play with NVIDIA. Semis are still acting well. What we need to look for on NVIDIA right now, you could be putting in an inside bar consolidation. Still a little early. You're above the short-term 7 moving average. That's a positive sign. It's actually still outperforming the NASDAQ at the moment. Basically, if we look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is trading above its seven-day moving average here in yellow. And then you look at the QQQ daily chart, Qs are actually trading below its seven-day moving average. So definitely a little bit of weakness in the entire QQQ complex when you compare it to NVIDIA. It's showing that semis are still catching an underlying bid. Um, at the moment, the big thing, if NVIDIA, if NVIDIA clears this 905 high pivot bar here, 906, this impulse green candle bar, it likely wants to go right back to the high end of this channel. And what I'm looking for next in NVIDIA, okay? So this was your high, your all-time high in NVIDIA, 970. Sold off, bounced, created a lower high in NVIDIA. Your first lower high in the trend for quite a long time. Then you sold off, you created your first lower low in the trend. So NVIDIA could be going through a bit of a distributive price action here. You have your first lower high, you have your first lower low. That doesn't confirm a downtrend, but it's potentially showing signs of starting a downtrend. Starting. 
And again, obviously, it's going to come down to what the SOXX does. Look at the SOXX. That has triggered bearish price action. I likely see it coming down to 210 and then even 204. It's going to stair step its way down. We're still just waiting on these QQQ. It is trying to firm up. We're down about, uh, or I'm down about, three cents a contract now. Still riding 441 calls at 42 cents a contract. Hopefully that helps Bart on NVIDIA. Next couple days, again, it's tricky because obviously the market can break down, but Q's again, or NVIDIA is still just holding this, this inside bar. So I think if you get above this bar, you look for calls. If you get below the screen bar, you look for shorts on NVIDIA. Right now, it's just kind of in the center point of its range. It did fill its gap fill today. That's a positive sign. But we got to wait for more. There's also a potential scenario on the hourly chart where you can see if you draw this trend line across, you could be forming a bit of a he inverse head and shoulders on the NVIDIA hourly chart. We could be forming the right shoulder as we speak. So if that triggers, then that puts you, there's an upside move, right? Uh, on the NVDA chart, that's decent, decently sized. You know, another 8.6% from the neckline puts you at a new, pretty much just below, or just at double top, it would put you. So that's what I'm watching for on the, the chart. Gunners will pull through. Thank you, Daisy. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Qs are still struggling in this range, seeing more and more sellers. Potentially a little micro inverse head and shoulders on the Qs. It hasn't triggered yet. How you would draw it would be that would be your neckline. Again, it hasn't triggered. But notice the type of selling has sort of uh, slowed down in this range. Obviously, Microsoft's still struggling. But the selling is abating in this range. You lost 500 of that 1K, still a good day. Yeah, it's tough, right? It's always difficult to give back profits on the session. You never like that. I'm still in these. Uh, what did you lose on there? Anonymous. You like 437 calls? Yeah, definitely a little less risky. Definitely a little less risky. QQQ is almost negative, guys. Almost negative. Whoa, look at Apple. Holy shit. Did anyone just see what happened on Apple? If this is any sort of sentiment on the market, look at that big green stick. Is there news on Apple? That just went from red to green in the, literally the last few minutes. So that's going to put an underlying bid likely in the market if... If Microsoft can catch a bid here in NVIDIA, that was a huge jump in uh, in Apple. Typically, when Apple makes a big move like that, it does push the markets up. But right now, you're still seeing NVIDIA dumping. So Apple's catching a huge bid, but NVIDIA is dumping. So NVIDIA is looking to go potentially negative, but that was a monster move in Apple. It's almost uh, was back to the green side there. Almost back to the green side on Apple. Huge bid. QQQ calls, yeah. Sometimes you just got to cut them, right? If you don't want to sit in it, smart thing to do.
Now I'm down right now on those 441 calls. I'm sitting at 42 cents. So I'm down to third down to 31 cents. I'm down about 11 cents a contract. So not the nicest trade at the moment. Certainly, uh, we're a bit stuck right now. Hmm. Weird headline. Negative headlines on Apple. Obviously, it had that big gap down. And now we're seeing Apple having a big reversal to the upside. Yeah, that's a good question. What ETF is Snowflake in? I th is it part of the IGV? I think it might be in the IGV ETF. I think that's what it might be. Qs are trying to push up again, guys. We're sitting at 34 cents a contract now in those QQQ calls, 441 calls. See, the Qs are trying to trigger this little micro inverse head and shoulders pattern that we discussed. So you can see it's trying to push up. That should give us about a move back up to about 439.50-ish. I'm still riding those cues. I did not get shaken out quite yet. Apple's still trying to press. Now NVIDIA is trying to join in on a bit of the fun after it got faded quite substantially. Whoa. Every time the queues try breaking out, the same seller just keeps it at bay. Hard sell side pressure there. And keep in mind, this was the first time the S&P was trading into that 50-day um, that, uh, moving average in quite a long time. Even the Russell is a bit oversold in this region. I'm seeing the Dixie getting faded slightly. VIX is now coming in slightly. Alright, Qs are still trying to hold this breakout trend line. It's now 11.12. You really need to evaluate your stop loss. That's one of the most difficult things of trading, right? We all hate being wrong, but often often taking a loss on the chin and knowing where we're wrong is, is probably the, the, the toughest thing of trading. It really is. I struggle with it too. Everyone struggles with it. Anyone that says they don't, you know, human nature, we never want to be wrong. We always want to try to hold on. Believe, believe. We're going to get a reversal. We're going to get a reversal. Even right now, you know, on a technical basis, when I entered these 441 calls, basically thinking we're going to hold this support, technically speaking, just based off of analyzing the QQQ alone and nothing else, I should have stopped out of this trade and taken the loss. However, because it was a smaller position and I was still at the lower boundary support channel, I've been accumulating a little bit more, brought in my average of touch, and just based off of looking at other intraday analysis with the dollar weakening a touch, yields were coming in slightly, energy market just taking a bit of a breather, I'm expecting still a little bit of a bounce in this market before we go lower. They do typically give you a little bit of an intraday bounce off of a gap and crack day, and then they take it lower. So, I mean, if we just do a Fib retrace from this high, to your high pivot, to your low pivot, you know, a simple retrace should take us back to about 438.95. If the bulls want to give it a really big hoorah push, your 382, which is at 439.55. But ultimately, I mean, the downside has opened up a potential move to about 437 today. That could easily happen. 437 today could happen. You're seeing Apple weaken tremendously here.
QQQ still struggling. Still holding this upsloping wedge pattern along with the channel. Look at this hourly chart trend line. That's basically what we're tagging right now on the queues. So it's a really big level for the NASDAQ. Really big level. And they are trying to break it even lower at the moment. Guys, I'm just about to add to my QQQ. I just added at 27 cents a contract. That's my final add to the QQQ 441 calls. Final add at 27 cents a con. My average is now at 35 cents a contract. Again, my average is at 37 cents a contract. It's now 11.16. The volume is going to slightly lighten up here, which favors a bit of a bounce. Again, we're still in a heavy, heavy downtrend. I repeat, I won't add to this position anymore. And finally, the line in the sand for me off of this trade where I'd cut it is if we get a close below this little pivot zone here. A little close below this 4.30. 795 pivot I will stop out of the trade for a loss and see we got rejected off of that breakout every single time we try popping keep getting sold into at the moment definitely a lot of weakness still being observed Meta is still trying to come in but Nvidia is weak Tesla is trying to stabilize here and See a little bit of buy side pressure. Dixie's still at the highs, but softening a tad here. Just softening a tad. The Russell's still at the lows, down 0.66% on the Russell 2000. 10 year yield still strong. 2 year yield still strong. It's common sense is talking about Snowflake here. So it's weighted pretty heavily in the cloud, AI, and automotive, automation and robotics ETFs. In the MSCI world, USIT ETF trackers don't see if it's in any of the XLs, not at least a significant percent. No, I don't think it would be in the XLs. Uh, Anonymous is saying he has an hourly trend line that goes right through 437. Yeah, that's a really big level for the market. You want to you want to give support the benefit of the doubt until it breaks, right? Cues are still coming in a touch more. You can see Mike NVIDIA looking heavy. Look at the sell side pressure NVIDIA. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes of sell side pressure. Not a good sign. Coming into that EMA 113. Definitely not a good sign for NVIDIA at the moment. And then the cues. But getting near term oversold. Definitely some near-term oversold price action. And if you do that Fib retrace on NVIDIA, you can see it's breaching. It's critical support here. RTY in free fall. UNG new low. Yep, Nat gas coming in. Markets are under pressure. Yeah, Russell's coming in pretty sharply at the moment. Again, Qs are trying to hold steady here. Meta's getting a nice bounce. So this is where we could see the Qs bounce. Again, if Meta's bouncing, that's going to lift the entire communication ETF. It's a strong one. NVIDIA's still looking heavy. That's going to need a firm up. Apple looking a bit heavy at the moment. Microsoft's trying to bounce. I'm 
sitting at 35 cents a contract on those 441s, guys. 31 cents on 441. So we are down. And the Qs are still trying to put in lower lows, lower highs. You can see we're below the gap. So QQQ is actually negative. We're actually below the opening gap. That's a very bearish sign for the market at this point. Very, very bearish sign. Regionals are now down half a percent on the session. Still have a uh, majority of sectors. There's actually a lot of sectors red, a lot of sectors green. You have consumer discretionary, so Tesla, Amazon down by 0.3. XLV is actually bullish. That's up by 0.7. That was one of the, the sector analysis bullish sectors that we discussed in our review yesterday. Utilities are down, which is one of the other bullish sectors that I discussed, but that one's seen some sell side. Real estate's down one. Staples are down up by 0.18. XLK slightly negative. Financials are green. Energy slightly down. Communications green. Materials green. Regionals and retail are also down at the moment. No bear flagging or doing Apple soon? Let's see. Yeah, honestly, pr Snowflake's probably going to shape up to do what Apple does. Obviously, it needs the market to remain a bit firm. But Snowflake is at this decent area. I'm still watching it very closely as a swing trading opportunity. I am watching it. There might be one more little low in Snowflake based off of this RSI. Divergent, there could be one more little low pierce of this area. And then I think that's a bit of your long signal. So I'm, I'm waiting for potentially just one more little new low in Snowflake. Take out these pivots, shake out all of this accumulation that has been occurring. And then I think we're ready to potentially go on the long side. So keep it on watch, but I think that there's just going to be one more little low in Snowflake before the long signal occurs. Just one more little low. Qs are just melting and grinding down here. Again, I'm still down 10 cents a contract now, and I'm not adding to the position. But the theta is starting to burn a little bit here. The theta is starting to burn a touch. Qs are still negative. S&P is still slightly green. Russell's down 0.8. Yields are green. Gold, silver, green. VIX did a bullish reversal. It's now green. Dollar's green. New lows on the Qs, guys. New lows on the QQQ NASDAQ market. And remember, markets are, uh, in order to set a bullish reversal, markets are always looking for two things, either higher highs or, or, or lower highs and lower lows, right? There's really, it's either looking to make a new high or making a new low. Obviously, today we're, we're making new lows, but bullish reversals tend to happen from lows, so... Let's see if we can get a, any sort of a facelift at this point. We're still at the low end of this range. Still just grinding lower and lower. Potentially a little bit of a falling wedge pattern is occurring. Potentially. Still very, very weak though. Again, 437. It just seems we're melting to that target. Yeah, it does look like it wants to. But it's an in interesting observation about Snowflake hits common sense on Apple. Obviously, everyone was getting bared up on Apple when it was triggering that head and shoulders, testing that neckline. Now, we're starting to see, uh, obviously, we saw Apple have that big multi-day surge, couple-day surge, really firmed up across the board. Qs are trying to stabilize here. Let's see if we can get any sort of a positive reaction. Again, a bit of a down-sloping wedge pattern potential. It is trying to firm up. I think if the Qs can start closing on a one-minute basis back above this gap zone, then we should retrace half of this down move. But again, I'm getting uh, very close to potentially having to cut these for a loss. 
is still hanging on. Let's look at the Russell. Russell's trying to stabilize. So Qs are still trying to get above this key gap zone. They have not been able to do so just yet, but they're trying. They are trying. Russell's also trying. I'm seeing the Dixie breaking down a touch. Nothing crazy, just a small little, little bit of weakness creeping in. Honestly, even at this point, if we get a small pop and if we get a break, even move to 35 cents a contract, guys, I may cut these just because the theta is going against us and um, wasn't really the best entry on the trade. We've certainly had better. Still think we could actually make money, let alone break even, but um, definitely not the best entry on this Kiki Q as we've been seeing it just grind lower and lower. But again, if I get a pop to about 35 cents a con, right now we're sitting at 27 cents on the Qs. If we get a pop, I will look to just even take a break even on this position at this point. Just to reevaluate, get the capital out. Right now we're seeing Meta, Google curling up, Microsoft trending sideways, Apple curling down, Tesla trying to curl up, NVIDIA trying to curl up, Amazon's also trying to make a little bit of a push here. Net net Qs are now trying to get above this previous little gap zone. So that's your opening gap. They cracked the markets, took it negative. Now they've gotten people all bared up because the markets and indices went negative. Now the question is, do they rip it up half a percent or 50% retrace of this whole up move, down move, and then do they take it lower? So again, I still have a 437 downside target, but typically market makers like to bear people up before they take it lower. We're only down about five cents a contract now, so just being patient with these uh, these uh, 441 calls at the moment. Nice little up move. We're basically almost back to break even. They're at 34 cents a contract, guys. Can we get a little bit of a win out of this trade? We are seeing a nice little move. Indices are back to the green side. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a sizable push in this equity market. Again, we're actually break even now on those contracts. I'm still holding 441s at 42, sorry, 35 cents a con, 35 cents a contract, but looking for a continuation here you can even see that the queues are trying to break this little area I think that at the minimum we probably retest this pivot to pivot this little key trend line even if you draw through this little pivot zone you can see that sort of resistance zone sitting right at 439.65 I'm gonna go with the more conservative sorry the more uh, conservative resistance here using these two pivots so if we can get a push into this zone we'll likely be up on those contracts right now we're just down two cents so we have moved up off of the lows Dixie fading yield softening a touch which is why the markets are liking that you have Bitcoin down one and a half percent MicroStrategy down four Wow, that FSRN Fisker is up 46 percent off of the lows still trading at uh, what is it? Three cents a share. Nothing impressive.
other than one daily move. Silver is still green, Meta is down 0.4, Google green, Amazon green, MSOS down 1.85, Lulu's up 1.64. Come on, Qs. One more little push up, guys, and I am going to look to exit this QQQ call trade. Guys, cons did go break even there off of that little push into the EMA 113. Contracts did go break even. I'm still in though. I'm still in. Qs are trying to make another little push, seeing Nvidia spiking up to the upside, Microsoft curling. So we're still seeing some buying pressure. All right, guys, I just took a break even. I exited those contracts at 35 cents. Just a break even on that trade. I am all out of that QQQ trade for a break even. All out at 35 cents a con. Okay. So really, it's been a positive day. Not the biggest winning day, not the, but still a net positive day for us with that big QQQ trade off of the open. We did take a small loss on that DJT, a win on the Qs, and then a break even on this one. But I am all out of that QQQ call position. Do I think it can move a little bit higher? I do, but at this point, I'm just looking at. Uh, at reevaluating and getting a better trade because we're kind of at this no man's land where the market's gapped and cracked, not a positive sign. We are trying to push up here in the near term. All right, guys, I'm going to go silent on the mic for a bit. If anything changes crazy, I will jump back on. But uh, other than that, just be careful with this, right? We are still in a downtrending session. Markets are putting in lower lows, lower highs on the intraday session. But just be careful. It's not an all flat short. They could keep markets range bound. Again, the downside on the day is 437, but there's always a chance we can push up to 440 before we move lower. Even if you retested the high of this range, you could still put in lower highs on the session. But at this point in time, I will be muting the mic. And again, if anything changes, you feel free to, uh, I will hop back on the mic. Feel free to put some tickers on. I'll try to come back on a bit later. And um, and uh, hopefully we can review some charts together. On that note, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you in a bit.
guys if QQQ gets rejected off of this this little uh, neckline zone 437 target becomes very very likely so just watch this key area very closely because rejection here would not be good for the market
Hey guys, just a quick update here. We've seen the QQQ pretty much always, um, pretty much tag that 437 target that we had on watch. Obviously, it's still putting in lower lows on the session, confirming that downtrend. Now that we are close to that 437 target, you can see we may go a little bit lower, maybe pierce that level. But uh, there should be some really decent sized support here. Whether it's enough to go along at this moment in time, you are breaching the 50 day moving average on the Qs. So you've now tested this area one, two, three, four, five times. This is the fifth time we're testing that uh, daily moving average on the QQQ. Calls right now? No, I don't think calls yet. Just let it uh, play out a little bit more. I think that, um, you know, yeah, there, there's just a lot of weak looking charts at the moment. So I think that we could see a continuation flush pretty much across the board. Alright guys, so we're seeing the cues still falling here. I like for, for calls on the cues, I think, you know, based off of this sell-off, believe it or not, we could actually, I only had a measured move down to about 437 today, but with the sell side pressure that's occurring, I could see us hitting 435, 436 today. On the QQQ, if we hit 436, you can actually see there's a big daily chart gap fill here, right at that 435, 26. So I mean, if we lose this area, there's a chance we could keep flushing all the way down to this zone. That's where I'd be more inclined to look for calls and a potential bounce. Yes, this area could be a bounce based off of this little support channel that we've been chopping in. But again, we run the risk. The market's in a gap and crack mode from us going up 0.8% to now negative on the session by 0.22. Yield still strong. Dollar still strong. The VIX has firmed up a touch. Um, definitely uh, not positive price action for the overall equity markets at this given point anonymous saying he sold his 437 puts nice job nice job writing those down locking in gains good job um, Tesla making a big right shoulder right head and shoulder breakdown into new low of day yeah potentially I don't see a head and shoulders on the 10 minute chart um, let's see the five minute chart let's just pull up Tesla it's always easier to discuss the socks so, I mean, there's no real head and shoulders there that I see. Um, we're actually just putting in potentially, yeah, this is a tough pattern because you did make a higher high in the overall little bit of a near-term trend. But now you're coming back down, potentially trying to put in a higher low. Very tough chart. Obviously, it's still bearish because it's underperforming the market. But you are sitting at that daily gap fill zone. Um, but if we break this level, I mean, <clears throat> Tesla is likely going to move even lower in the near term.
All right, so yeah, we did see a bit of a decline there, continuation move in the Qs. Obviously, some people are looking at calls. Again, my measured move was completed on the day, but it's always tough to do calculations based off of gap ups and gap downs because you never know how institutions are distributing. But as of now, I mean, if we pretty much erase everything on the chart. I'm just gonna remain, whoop, let's backspace there. I'm just gonna remain, rem remove all of these key trend lines and uh, drawings here. Let's simplify the QQQ chart a bit. Hourly chart right now. Again, we we're, we're all can see this big, big trend line that we're trying to touch right now. Obviously, if this breaks and gives way, you've had a lower high, lower high, lower high on the intraday price action. So let's just see, just for a little bit of analysis here, if you draw a parallel channel connecting these three pivot points, and I mean you can draw it really using this high, but I'm going to use the three intersection points, and we drop it down, you can see that the lower boundary trend line takes us all the way down to about 433, 432.90 here. That's where the market in a little bit of a <coughs> very, very vicious sell-off could find some near-term support. Maybe it finds support there tomorrow over the coming days. But you also have this massive gap fill to contend with. So we've just simplified the chart on an hourly basis. And really, that's your big level of support that we're coming up into. You can see that we still have a bit of downside that is set to occur if we hit that support, which takes us down to the low 436s on the chart. So I'm watching these key areas very, very closely. Again, gap fill right around this uh, 435 22. Let's actually just put a trend line across there to identify the exact area that that gap would be filled at. So we're looking at 435.25 and 435.11 as really, really solid support. Obviously, if we lose this support range here, you can see you have a little bit of support that you're trying to break and breach. And if you draw your trend line horizontally, that support we're still technically just a little bit of ways away. So this scenario, I'm just gonna use horizontal support on that trend line because we have our hourly support trend line upsloping. Again, we've, we've basically breached that little channel again that we chopped in. So we're watching the cues continuing to fall. There is a long level, guys. Get ready. There is a long level coming up, but it's not quite there yet. Just let this market do its thing for now. Let's look at some of the big boys again. NVIDIA. You can see NVIDIA is not really at support yet, but coming into it, IWM still getting hit. Let's take a peek at uh, Microsoft as well. That's going to be an important name to pay attention to. So that one's definitely under pressure. So what's interesting about Microsoft, if you kind of use that same hourly trend analysis, you know, on the queues and Microsoft, Microsoft's actually breaching a fairly big one going all the way back to January. Sorry, there's a little bit of ruffling in the background. My cat is just killing one of our indoor trees. All right, QQQ is coming back down yet again. Meta is seeing hard sell side. Apple's now seeing Tesla's getting demolished new lows on Tesla. All right, guys, get ready to uh, enter a little bit of a long position coming up on the Qs. I'm just trying to rearrange some of these charts just to give you a better viewing and viewpoint. We're almost there at the queues. We are hitting some support here. This is kind of minor. You probably do get a bounce here, you know, putting in that oversold positive divergence on the RSI chart at the moment. So there is probably a bounce scenario here. Oil right now has still taken a bit of a breather lower. You know, individual stocks. Really what give it up today is really the mega caps, you know, the likes of NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Google. They're the primary ones that have really started to see some downward pressure. Guys, in this type of scenario where you're in a bit of a distribution phase in the market, 
where we're putting in potentially lower highs and lower lows intraday, options become a little bit more riskier. So common shares when day trading are tend to be a little bit more favored. Obviously, there's more reward and risk with options, but this type of phase in the market where you typically see bigger declines often are more a little bit more challenging and tricky to trade. You can see the cues are getting a bounce here. I still didn't really take anything. Yeah, Bart saying beautiful free fall. Absolutely, absolutely. Microsoft getting a nice bid here, down 0.45%. QQQ really big bounce. I mean, you see the power of that bounce. That was a pretty exceptional bounce. If we adjust this little channel, that's really the reason we bounced was that parallel channel. Couple confluence to support this low pivot, lining up with that upsloping trend line. Nice bounce, but we should do a back test. We should do a little bit of a back test, and then potentially another little leg higher. Now we got to wait for this pattern. Pretty good sign that the cues did a gap up there on the one minute chart. Often you can buy that la that gap up move. So I'm going to look for an entry, you know, somewhere down, retesting either double bottom or trying to fill this gap. Obviously, Microsoft had a pretty big bounce. Next support on, on NVIDIA is right down at 875. There's the retest of the gap, guys. I'm looking at 437 calls. Just got filled at 78 cents a contract. Starter position, guys. 437 calls, and they are melting it down. So I got filled at 78 cents a contract. They dipped all the way down to 73, so anyone had the opportunity to buy even better. I bought at the gap, basically. We are retesting that double bottom. So again, I'm in a 437 QQQ call at 78 cents. This is a starter position, extremely light, realizing it can even flush down to this zone here in a pretty sharp move. You can see NVIDIA is breaking, Microsoft heading much lower. So we've had four consecutive hours in the queues selling off from the opening. 40 consecutive minutes on the 10 minute chart. And they're still managing to go a little bit lower. Anonymous saying doesn't know about calls anymore, everything red. Yep, yep. Keep in mind, right, even though the queues are only down 0.48%, they gapped up and at the highs they're up about 0.8%. So really 0.8 plus 0.4 is about, you know, 1.32%, 1 1.3. So well, the queues have had a pretty big fall already intraday. Yes, it can go more and it will likely go more, but it's still technically o very oversold intraday for a for the midday price action around this 1244. Obviously, things can go lower. Absolutely, they can. But everything's risk to reward basis, right? I'm taking a stab here. I'm taking I've showed you the little bit of trend lines. Obviously, there's still massive support down here where we could flush to. But we're at some intraday support. Nice parallel channel at an upsloping resistant resistance and support trend line. And there's still some positivity in the in the old market. I'm seeing some green across the screen, across healthcare, still materials, financials. When financials are strong, guys, that actually puts an underlying bid in the market. 
Investors have much, much more confidence chasing risk assets when there's a little bit of positivity in the financials. They have faded, but still showing a bit of positivity. Anonymous will consider around 435. Yeah, that's probably a safe bet. That's not, not bad being conservative. Absolutely not bad. Again, NVIDIA's been hit pretty hard right now. We also have a positive divergence on the QQQ intraday chart lower lower price action on the Qs but higher lows and higher highs on the RSI so a little bit of an intraday short term divergence let's let's see if it uh, surmounts to anything Qs are still struggling here obviously it can go lower this is why lighter share size is key at this range moment the uh, worst performing mega cap is just give me a second meta down one point well Tesla actually if you're including Tesla but is Tesla even a mega cap anymore? I mean technically it is. It's just a really big large cap. It's a mega large cap I guess. Our Qs are trying to catch a small bid here. Microsoft firming up off that key support zone so good to see. That'll help things. We're just waiting on really NVIDIA here on the 10 minute chart. Still showing some bleakness. Cons are now at 79 cents. We're up about a penny. We're looking for 437 calls. Bitcoin's right now under a lot of pressure. Daisy May throwing up the bear signal. That's a buy signal. That's a buy signal. Inverse the crowd. A lot of nervous Nellies in here. Not wanting to take a stab yet. We'll see if uh, being aggressive and buying the dip in this bull market pays off for a little intraday support level. And that's the thing about bull markets. Whenever you start selling off in a bull market and going through a distributive phase, there's a lot of support levels that will get bounces. So typically the first sell off from an all time high, you know, you can be aggressive. Just as long as there's support zones. Right now it's tricky because there's also geopolitical events. And again, I am going to wrap up the stream earlier today. This will probably be my last day trade of the session. It's a beautiful sunny day. And don't want to overdo it. Nat gas still weak on the session, down 2.5%. Qs are now firming up here, guys. So we're up about $0.85 cents a contract on those 447 calls. We're printing now. We're pushing. Here we go. Let's see, 437. We're about $0.40 cents away. I'm still holding. I haven't trimmed any cons yet. I'm still holding. You can see NVIDIA trying to recapture this little trend line. So that does say if this candle tries to turn a little bit more into of a positive hammer candle, bottoming till in the last 46 seconds, it should have a little push up. They may want to close it slightly below on a 10 minute basis, triggering a potential breakdown here. But NVIDIA is the king of having these fake breakdowns and then push it right back up. So let's just be careful. NVIDIA could get the bearish close and then they could push it up in the next candle. As of now, QQQ trying to carve out a little bit of a bottom here.
Tesla saw some nice positive price action. Meta is trying to see a bit of reversal. Really, the weakness is still coming from uh, from the semis at this point. Nvidia hasn't gotten going yet. Russell 2000 still at the lows. That's down 0.87. S&P is down 0.2. Q's are down 0.4. Microsoft down 0.4. Apple down 0.8. Google's green. Berkshire Hathaway's green. That's typically a positive sign for the equity markets. Uh, United Health green. J&J, Walmart, Procter, J.P. Morgan all green. Bank of America is faded off of that massive move in the morning. Still green though. Pfizer, AbbVie, Coke green. Costco down half a percent, ASML up 0.6, Pepsi, AVGO, Oracle negative. Netflix down 1.3, Disney showing flat price action, AMD down 0.89, Canopy growth down 5 and a change. All right, Qs are still seeing a little bit of weakness. Uh, it's common sense saying I started a small position in SMTC pre-earnings. It's holding up nice in a weak semi period. Okay. Let's take a look at SMTC. Semtech. It's up 0.43% today. Yep, so definitely outperforming the Qs which is a positive sign for sure. So you've had your first like really pullback on the RSI from your high, which likely means yes, you do have more upside. You're just consolidating right at that weekly chart resistance as well as this pivot. So I mean, I would like to see more consolidation on this name, but it's definitely showing some some signs of optimism. All right, contracts are still just sitting around 80 cents, slightly up on the trade, but really the Qs are still haven't made a big directional move, kind of still above that 436 strike, below 437. So we'll see which way they want to give the market at this point. I'm expecting a retrace all the way back to these pivots, which just puts us right below 437. We have some decent resistance there. If you get rejected, you know, there's still obviously the downside target of 435 now based off of what we're doing. But markets, this is a pretty hard sell off, right? We've been selling all day. And, you know, just the range that we've traded in really from the high of day on the queues down to this low of day, pretty decent distributive day down 1.39%, right? Pretty decent down move. Our cues are still just trying to level out here. Let's do a volume check on the cues. So the cues are only trading about 23.8 million shares. So yeah, we'll probably hit about 40 million today on the cues, which is kind of in line with the average S&P. S&P is still hovering at that 50-day moving average. So again, last time the Qs hit <coughs> their 50-day, they got a bounce, all right? S&P still tagging right on that 50-day. You actually hit it again today. So we are seeing the S&P making a nice move. Obviously, we're in those four, uh, the QQQ calls, which are making a nice little move here. So we're in 437s. Those are going back up for another attempt at a breakout. 4,375. Yep, 4,375. Still holding them at 78 cent average. We've been up about 10 cents here and there, but I still think we're just carving out a little bit of a base here in the queues to have a small little bit of a liquidity bounce to take it to the next step lower. Move up and then move down.
should be shaping up for something like this. A little move up into this 437, just above 437. Might add this week, yeah, that's not a bad looking chart. It's not a bad looking chart. Just recognize semiconductors like the bear, the ETFs are actually going through a distributor positive. So I mean, I like the sense that you're finding relative strength as the actual semis are going through a bit of a correction here. But uh, obviously, anything can start to break down if the whole sector is weak. So it's a tough one, but definitely an interesting chart for sure. Let's look at the intraday pattern. I mean, again, a little bit of distribution going on. You can see we're right on this little bit of a brink of this neckline. <coughs> Sorry, I got a dog. All right, guys, you can see the cues are trying to form a little bit of an inverse. Breakout target is 437.40. We're up slightly on those 437 calls. And we're looking for it to move a little bit higher. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a breakout. Dollars trying to move up simultaneously. NAC gas continuing to fall a little bit more. We've really seen Microsoft give up a little bit of that bounce that it just occurred. Still holding this 419.75 area, but definitely showing some relative weakness. Here comes a little bit of an attempt at a breakout. Trying to still carve out a base of this right shoulder on the intraday one minute chart. April has, it's common sense saying April has historically been the worst month for semis over a long period, even though one would think it's not seasonal. They also had a change of leadership after poor management. Okay, very interesting. Thanks for that note. So historically, April has been the worst month for semis over a long period. Interesting. All right, so Qs are trying to make another little run here. NVIDIA is trying to firm up. Let's see if breakout buyers are coming in. Yes, they are. We're up to 83 cents. So as we start breaking out here, guys, I'm going to start scaling out. Right when we hit this first little high pivot, like right now, we start scaling. I just sold half at 87 cents a con. And I'll be selling the full thing as soon as, if we get an impulse move to 437, which it could be, then I will be exiting. So cons are at 87. We locked in 9 cents a con on the first half. And we're still seeing a move higher here. 
again, any impulse candle I will sell into, any move into this 437 range I'll sell into. Upside target based off of this breakout is 437.35, this high pivot here, right in line with this red bar. Now this is important. Do we get the back test buyers? This is the next phase up. If the buyers who back test here and buy, we hold here, we get another move up. But obviously now we run the risk. If we lose this trend line, you could easily go back down to this low channel. So they are selling it into the price action here. So potentially a failed breakout in 20 seconds we'll know based off of this one minute time frame candle. Very small candle, dollars pressing higher. All right guys, I'm cutting my QQQ calls here. I just cut them at 77 cents. So we took pretty much a break even on that second half. Break even on that second half. And I'm all out of those calls. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the stream here. Thank you all for tuning in. I have to cut it a little bit early today because it is really beautiful as the summer weather changes. The market will go into a little bit of a summer doldrum period. Um, so that means that volume, if we start to see volume trends lighten up, uh, that, that's definitely a, a dynamic change in the market that could affect trading on, on the swing trading and day trading basis that you want to be paying attention to. Uh, on that note, it was a fairly decent day. Caught a couple different trades here and there. Um, again, thank you all for tuning in. Definitely, because we've gapped up and faded, be cautious that this market could continue lower. We're oversold. We're getting oversold. But just be cautious that this could keep going lower based off of lower lows, lower highs intraday. Yields are still holding up. As long as that 10 years holding above 4.6, around that 2.47 positive gains, things should likely continue to see more weakness. Bitcoin selling, uh, commodities stay are under pressure as well, except for really gold and silver. VIX is slightly positive. UVIX is slightly positive. So definitely be mindful there's a lot of factors going against the market today, and things could just continue to grind lower. Thank you all. We'll see you on the charts tomorrow.